to love with Mr. Babb, but you go to talk to Mr. Babb, he was always so funny. He'd invite you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, sit down, sit down. And then when he was done, he would dismiss you. He was a little hand and, okay, okay, we're done. Bye bye, bye bye. <laughs> yeah, he <it> would. <laughs> and that he used to tickle us so bad. I was like, okay, we're done. You're finished with us. You know what to talk about? And so when he was done, it was over. And the little hand would we go. We all look at ourselves like at each other and be like, what? <laughs> you know, we're not done. <laughs> listen to you but he yes. wants you know he's like think of ideas come to me with with ideas and um he always would listen to you he'd always say let me wear the black hat and i didn't know what that meant until one time he just took it all on he's like let me let's just be parent who is mad and i'm gonna support you and he just he always stood by you always yeah. very supportive very supportive he was a great listener, I thought, too, you know, like you said, he would wear that black hat and when something would go on, he would sit back and, you know, he listened to the whole story, the full story, and then ask your opinion, um, see what you were thinking, and then he would come in and, you know, not really giving you, like, his opinion, but more like guidance. So always, like, you know, really, that, in that caring sense of open door policy, he's really, really good at. He really does that. Well, greetings in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I loved when he was always in the lobby greeting all. Yes, he did. He was faithful. He was there to greet the kids every morning unless he had something going on. But what I was thinking was that he was a jokester. He would come up with this stuff that I would be like, really? You really want to do that? <laughs> you know? And then when he used to put on the costume, uh, I remember when he dressed up like the Hulk and uh, Santa, Santa and some, some, something else, but, you know, nobody else would do that, and we did it. We would, you know, we'd do anything for the kids as well. He was always there for the kids. If I'm going to invite the kids in as well, too, and then also take the, the pictures with them and all of that, and keep was the best thing ever. And then it really was him because, one, A, for size, the same, and then he would talk to him at the same time. And he's like, I don't know. New things for the kids. <laughs> New things for the kids. I can hear him saying, uh, you know, at the sporting events, go voicing, always, <laughs> always on that front row, cheering those kids on. Yeah. I guess my, one of my favorites was when, um, oh, by the way, I hate everybody. Um, one of my favorite times was when we made the food video, and he got on top of the car. Yes. <laughs> He got on top of the car and he started dancing. And I was just like, I can't believe it. That was so funny. I must have played that over and over. What was that dance that was out at that time? Kind of like when it got side to side. Um, similar to what the kids started doing recently again. But they had the whole team, uh, it was a chair or something. It was, it was something big. It was either the summer was big or something. The whole school was in the back. It wasn't a Superman or nothing like that, was it? Mm -mm. Oh, he did that back in the day. In the yeah, yeah. yeah. He tried. I was saying he tried. Right. Yeah. Dad was very courageous. He didn't have a fear that he would try everything. He would try everything. No matter how he looked doing it, he would try everything. <laughs> he would try it. Yeah. I just love that he allowed me to be me. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it was still controlled uh, to, you know, he still pushed demand authority or whatever, but he just allowed me to be me. You know, even though we had parent situations, he would tell me, okay, I need you to take care of that. Okay, Mr. Baba, I promise I got it. You know, so it wasn't like, okay, get him off of this, but me, you know, he just allowed me that freedom to, to make things right. And one time, I don't know if y'all remember this, I, he was like, I said, Mr. Babb, somebody put this 
crawling under my car. <laughs> so it's that I'm allowed you to go and take care of that. And so I said, okay. I said, because they pushed it, they shoved this under my car. He said, well, let's look at the video. So we saw the video. We pinpoint the person, and he said, go. Go in. It wasn't two minutes later, Mr. Down came coming around that corner. <laughs>
some such sign, I guess, as man. He was like, well, he had a name in mind for you. He just stayed there. He kept it there. That's it. <laughs> He would just want to get right into it, and you you had you, you weren't afraid to buffer him with him. You could just take it and just laugh with it and yeah. have such a fun time with him. Uh, mm -hmm. I still love how he said one year we came back from summer break, and he's standing there doing you know waiting to start off, and his whole speech was about you know he likes to, uh, he'd always like to go to Vegas and uh, read a book by the pool in the summertime. And he said, I found out something. I found out that uh, I did my genealogy. He's like, and we're all listening. He's like, and I'm 20% Anglo. And oh, I was like, oh, my dad. Dad. <laughs> that's why you can't dance. See? And he's such a good sport. He always just took yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. He felt things really deeply, too. I, you know, just things that uh you know that were happening to kids or um to parents and all the staff members he just always took things to heart and um he was always genuine so many time. times like every dance every student council dance he'd be with me maybe to bring kids home and he would take them home or the kids that didn't come didn't have snow boots he'd buy them snow boots there's field trips, all that. Never tell anybody. You never want anybody to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, and just for him, I think, you know, since kids were always first, like they made the same thing, some of the examples, but even just like without even buying, he would remember, you know, uh, kids' stories, like whatever they were going through, he would check in with them. Hey, so how's so and so doing? Or how'd that work out? Or how's, you know, he just remember all of that stuff. And even like with the staff members, you know, our personal lives and things we were going through, um, you know, he would um, come up to us and ask, you know, how's something going on? Or, you know, even like with, with myself, with my, with Joseph, you know, doing his conditions and stuff, he would always ask, how's it going with that? How's it going with that? And just really caring and concerned, you know? Um, and we talked to everybody. My husband definitely enjoyed talking to him when we would have different um, get-togethers and gatherings. I remember Miss Hoffman's retirement party. They were down there talking at the bar. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know, but he was not afraid to talk to anyone. And he would open the conversation up and, and it would be on. And like he said, he would be very genuine with it. Genuine, he wanted to know, was concerned, to share, you know, with the kids and everything. So very genuine. Very genuine. Okay, so... Um, I first met Mr. Ben had been in my life for a long time. He first met my husband, but my husband was the athletic director, and Mr. Bad was the um, athletic, athletic director at a high school. So my husband came home and told me about this guy he had met that went to Norfolk State. And I was beaming because that's where I graduated from college. We also had a connection because we're both retired Army people. So that was our other connection. But um, I met Mr. Bat for the first time when I was an area math specialist, and he was the um, principal um, at Phillips. And I was new to the job, so I had to go talk to him and talk about my position. And what I remember about that first meeting with him was his smile. He made me feel so at ease in his demeanor. And I could tell he was a military person because the way he carried himself and his stature. Also, when I became a principal, Mr. Babs, or I call him Chuck, or Mr. Babs, y'all keep calling that, but Chuck and I, he became my teacher because if I needed something or I wasn't sure of something, he was somebody I could call for answer. I don't know, a lot of people know that Mr. That Chuck did back in the day when there was more African American administrators in the district. He would make sure they had a warm welcome. And Always, like, he would come to um, Leadership Week in July, and he would always introduce me or tell me about African-American administrators that were in the district. So I don't know a lot of people knew that, but he was always making sure we were connected with, the, with each other. 
things that, like I said, I um, what I'm going to miss about him mostly was his demeanor. No matter, like I said yesterday, no matter what was going on, and everybody else was all on fire. Chuck was calm, that military presence, and that smile was his. Thank you. With the new African American uh, leaders. So when I first started, uh, maybe it was my third year at UPS, so I ran into Charlie. Uh, and meet him. So because he and I used to meet him when we were black. And so I was standing over to the side and he kinda like walked over to me, he pulled up, he's like, Man, who are you? I was just kinda like introducing or just getting to know each other. When I told him why I was going, he's like, Look, let me talk. And that was kinda like the epitome of that relationship with Charlie. Each time I came around, he offered a lot of solid advice, a lot of just straightforwardness. But what I liked about him is he could have an easy kill. He was always a good fella. I mean, just to go to for resources for, or just to chop it up. He was just a good dude. Uh, so that's why I can add to Charmaine to pick it back and all that. And I, and I would add in there, um, as a young administrator, it was always, I remember first of all meeting Mr. Bad. Um, I called him Mr. Bad, everyone else called him Chuck or whatever, but it was Mr. Bad. Um, and one of the things that when I came into the district, he immediately met with me um, and he gave me words of encouragement and he was always calm, cool and collected. Um, but before he could even get anything out of his mouth, the first things that I saw was that he always had on that suit coat and he also had that big class ring on his finger. Um, and he had those on every single time that I saw him. Um, and it just really just went with his wonderful demeanor and his professionalism. But I guess one of the things that I definitely appreciated about Mr. Bad is his focus on, on students and making sure that we were always working on behalf of them. Um, I greatly appreciated him for that. Um, and, and so I'm really gonna miss Mr. Bad. And Blake, I'll, I'll go, um, same thing with you in 2001. And I remember back then, the far north used to meet, get together and just have um, conversations probably like weekly or every other week and met Mr. Babs and like you I just still call him Mr. Babs because as an African-American older man older gentleman I walked in the room and he would just sit there and I for me my leadership I always wanted to be like Mr. Babs because I'm like oh, quiet his demeanor but when he spoke everybody would listen and so for me that's always what I remember about him and what he does and so for again I just thank him so much because I'm like you all he would talk to us, he would share with us, he would give us advice. Um, and I always will always remember that. If I could, I could go next. This is Deborah. I was his human resources support for more years than I can count. I've known Mr. Bat for many years. I think back in 1994 is when I met him for the first time. Um, he always was um, very serious when I first met him, very military-like. When I first met Mr. Babb, um, I supported him through the years and then he hired Kayla as his assistant principal and I got the opportunity to see another side of him. He- um, Central office. Yes, I'm from central office, um, but actually I am, and have been a member of the um, Far Northeast support group for since it was created. There's been many, many things, but um, in regards to Mr. Babb, um, seeing another side of him where Kayla brought out that um, the personal side where I got to see him laugh and relax and really enjoy the work that he was doing. Um, he uh, and I were, I was Ms. Watson, he was always Mr. Babb. I could never call him anything else but Mr. Babb. Um, I respected him dearly. Um, I appreciated that he was the type of person that um, if he made a mistake, he would own that mistake. Um, I appreciated the fact that um, he often gave many people an opportunity to um, grow in their careers. He gave many people opportunities when no one else would. Um, he was definitely a supporter of our students, all students, but especially African-American students. I remember one day I was there for HR visit and I walk into his room and there is like this table full of guns that looked real, but they were play, play guns. Um, and um, we had a long, lengthy conversation about that and 
how he dealt with the students who brought those into the school building, very professional, um, but he was always willing to listen. And I will miss Mr. Babb for many, many reasons, but what I will miss most about him is how uh, respected he was and how loyal he was to his students, but also his staff. He was a great leader and I'm gonna miss him greatly. I think uh, for me, um, Bear, um, he always had, uh, I think like McWright said, uh, kind of like that even killed personality. He'd pull you to the side. He always have words of encouragement or he would always check on you. Um, and then I know that uh, there was some, um, some administrators before that have, um, that have uh, that are no longer uh, with us or no longer with the district that used to have like these mentor uh, meetings um, with uh, with the younger administrators, the ones that are new to our district, and I really appreciated um, that camaraderie because it doesn't exist anymore. Like that group doesn't exist for us anymore, and so. Uh, Mr. Babs was part of that, and um, I just always appreciated it all the time his professionalism and his honest care. And you know, I tend to be um, I, I tend to be a little animated and and get a little bit hyped up. Uh, no, no, and no, whatever. <laughs> and so him, um, I, I think just like thinking about him, he even like when he was. When he was upset, that always, his demeanor always was, you know, remain professional and even killed. And, you know, I appreciated that about him. And sometimes would even process in my head, like, okay, Rhonda, you need to, you know, pop down and, you know, be like Mr. Babs. Or I'd be like, how come Mr. Babs is upset? And, you know, and he just dealt with things in a different way. And so I really appreciated that about him um, and knowing that he, he did care about, you know, kids uh, and about administrator, other black administrators, and really did try to be there to mentor us and to support us as best as he could. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, I'm really, really, uh, I'm going to really miss that about him because, um, like I said, we really don't have that uh, anymore. And, and You know, Rhonda, what I like what you said is that he made sure like uh, we had a group or we had something of camaraderie. And I think about the loss of the folks that came before us that were our mentors. You know, you and I spoke briefly about a situation where you just took care of another administrator right before they walked into a real bad situation. I think he offered some of that for us and just thinking about what he gave and just his presence because i didn't know him as well as most of you guys but i knew every time i walked around him, it was always cordial it was always how are you doing young man is there anything i can do to help what's going on this type of thing so my thoughts are just even as we talk and we think about it how can we be that for each other because that's one of those things that uh, I, I go back to a conversation you and i had like Rhonda, back before integration it was a community. I mean, everybody looked out for everyone. Uh, integration kind of pulled some of that apart in the neighborhoods and the schools. But they, guys like him always made sure that we had a home or like somewhere we felt like we belonged or our voices mattered. So I think just an honor in him and some of the guys that have gone before us. Got to get back to that. Got to get back to it. And I think the spirit of Charlie would, would want us to make sure that that, that carries on. So. It's kind of like, I think of that as like, uh, what's that saying? What would Mr. Babs do? You know what I'm saying? What's that? What would so -so do? What would Mr. Babs do? So uh, for sure. And so I think that um, I, I, when I think of legacies, I was thinking a little about this. I think about legacies uh, and what people leave behind. I think what he leaves behind for us is the sense of, um, connection and a pride for us being, you know, uh, black leaders and the responsibility to check in with each other and to care for each other. I feel like that's something, if I had to take something away 
um, with regards to that um, is, you know, to, to, to support each other, to build on it and to make sure that we're growing uh, other black leaders and that we don't lose sight that, you know, they're out there and that we're all going through different struggles and need to, to lay eyes or just to, like he did, pull you to the side just to say, hey, how you doing, what you need. So um, I, I was just thinking about, I feel like uh, he's done that for several of us. And um, that's, that's, that's huge, right? You don't really have that a lot anymore. That's huge. So I wanted to chime in a bit more in regards to Mr. Babs and how he was about family. He did treat anyone who came into his building or anyone around him as family. I remember whenever I would go um, to support um, him at Florida Pitt Waller, he always made sure that he knew I loved coffee. He made sure that I had the coffee that I liked, the creamer, the water, whatever he was eating for lunch, he would offer it. It was just like going to his home. That's how he always was. I remember when Patty LaBelle made those pies that came out and I was like, oh, I can, I got her. I can beat her. And Kayla, cause Kayla was going on and on and on about these pies. I brought Mr. Bell a super kid a pie and oh my goodness, he was in heaven. Um, it was just those things about him making you feel so at ease, making you feel a part of his family. He shared when he first became a grandfather um, with his first grandson and then uh, subsequently his second grandson. And he was the proudest father, proudest grandfather. And that too is something that I will always remember that it's not a lot of people who will welcome you into their school, into the, their office the way Mr. Babb did and make you feel at home. Even when I was there being HR, it was not necessarily always positive when I go come walking in the door, but he made me feel welcome each and every time. I think there's something to say about that, that the, 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 the people that can do that, like each, each of us and others, right, that we know of have a connection with him where he made each individual person feel as though they had their own unique uh, kind of relationship with him, right? And so, that's that's a unique thing. Like everybody can do that. I I, I feel like um, I feel like Miss Slaughter was like that, and I feel like Mr. Babs was like that, and and that kind of speaks to me to just um, just how much he's gonna be missed, right? And um, that that's a unique thing. Everybody doesn't have that that uh, ability to do that, and so. Uh, and he did. So yeah, that's, I'm, that's, that's going to be missed. Definitely. So Deborah, I think you work with him the longest. If there were one thing that you would want us to take away from this or something going forward, because these are difficult times to move or navigate because we've all lost somebody special or had some difficulties uh, this entire year, whether, you know, how it goes. And so when we get together as families or we get there as colleagues, friends or something, I try to reflect on what was the message? What should I have learned? What do I take away? So I would ask you, I mean, if there's one thing you can give us to possibly keep his legacy moving or keep some things about him, we can't replace him, but there's definitely some things we can keep pushing in his legacy. What would you suggest? Well, I, I think we, everyone has that story and I think um, to put it in a nutshell, Mr. Babb, re he really was a model um, for all of us. And that's including his, the students that um, he saw grow up and move on. Um, he's been from high school to ECE. He has just made sure, you know, that model that DPS has about children's first, that's Mr. Babb, making sure that all children, but especially children of color, were educated in the proper way so they could go on to um, strive to be whatever they wanted to be. Uh, and it, it, that's the takeaway that I can provide for him, knowing that he treated everyone the same, regardless of race, ethnicity, or it, even let's not leave out the special education students. 
He was a champion of all students, but he made sure that all students, and student, including our special education students, got the proper education. Um, we had a difficult time. We had a, a, a teacher, a special ed teacher, who was not doing right by his kids. It, it takes a lot for Mr. Babb to say, um, I need that person out of this building. But he took that step, which is something that was out of his comfort zone. We worked together to ensure that all of the students, including the special education students, got the best possible teacher they could get. And then he got he worked hard to get her out of there, but he did it. So one of the, the best memories that my kids had were, was when Mr. Babb would dress in the Hulk costume and the school was green. And so he went from classroom to classroom in that Hulk costume dressed from head to toe as Hulk. And he would go <laughs> to the classrooms and he was like, rah! <laughs> as I, I remember it was that. So cute. So I have a picture of him doing that. Yes. Uh, and the, the little ones were like, ah! <laughs> so ruckus in the classroom. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah. That was cute. I remember that. Yeah. Dad in his Santa Claus suit when he used to walk around everywhere. And, yeah. <laughs> and the kids would say, Yes, Mr. Dad. And he's like, No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Or would he wear the bison costume? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bison. <clears throat> you could always tell whether it was him or somebody else because he was always the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> so it was when, well, I don't know if he was dressed in the bison costume, but he would remember the chant. Lexi said the chant that we are the bison, mighty mighty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, man, I think for me, for Mr. Babb, I mean, he's the one that hired me. So, I mean, there's so many, I mean, I was cleaning, I'm cleaning up my place and, and I found like, you know, his, his car, you know, is uh, from, you know, actually, you know, this is from Phillips Preparatory. That's how old. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, so I'm cleaning things out. I'm a pack rat, obviously, but like, I'm keeping this just as a, a memory. Yeah. You know, uh, because he hired me, and, and, and uh, you know his dedication, and you know wearing the, his uh, military suit, uh, or you know, on uh, you know by Veterans Day, whatever we had. Veterans Day. Um, you know, and just yeah, his his, his love for the uh, the community and the kids. Uh, I mean, he, he would do anything for uh, you know, and, you know having these very intense meetings with the, the parents is okay you know, in a pretty good pretty good mood so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah um i i will say also the same uh, that he gave me the the opportunity to work at the baller and i am so grateful that i'm part of this team and working with him honestly it, it was nice it was fun i mean he made me laugh he will make parents laugh a lot, a lot. I mean, <laughs> I, I'll say, I mean, Manuel will say so many comments and Mr. Bab didn't take it the wrong way. It was, <laughs> it was so nice. Like, I mean, one of the memories that I had, and I think Charlotte was there too, uh, Mr. Bab said, Maria, I just had a conversation with Manuel. And, and I believe Manuel said, oh, I know why you like your, your coffee black. Because you're black. <laughs> That's Mr. Bab. And Mr. Bab was just cracking, laughing. Oh my God. He looked at him like, wait, did he really just say that? He <laughs> was <No. laughs> so, so red. I didn't know which eye was going to Which eye? But that was, that was him being always nice and, I mean, caring for the kids. I mean, yeah. 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 You guys remember him doing the push, um, being up at the front desk, like in my very first year being up there or whatever, and 
we'd be up there like furiously writing late passes for everybody and he'd be up there going why are you late why are you late i'm here they're here why weren't you here do i need to come to your house and wake yeah. you up in the morning because i will do that and he would <laughs> talk to all the kids like that every morning i'll come to your house i got up at 5 30 you get up at 5 32. <laughs> Kids didn't even know what to say. They're like, uh. Yeah. The kid will be like, okay, Mr. Bad. No, no. And the older ones, you know, the middle school kids, they'd be like, oh, no, you don't want to come to my house. Good stuff. I remember one of the fun fun times was when we did that. Um, What was the challenge when we went outside? Um, oh, the, the dance? You were talking yeah, about the, the dance. dance. Oh, right. the dance. The, the challenge. The Harlem Shake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. That was fun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. He was always very giving. I know there was a few times, too, you know, he, there was like a few kids that he just kind of latch on to and take them under his wing. And, you know, there's some that I know he even took for haircuts or, you know, bought him some shoes or something or, you know, help the kid get a sports physical so he could play sports or something like that. I mean, or he was haircuts. always, yeah, yeah, haircuts. He was yeah. always doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, he just had a very kind and giving heart. Yeah, and he was the same way with parents. You know, he gave them so many opportunities, so many chances that the parents have done. You know, things and everything. Uh, he was always willing to help, no matter what. He gave him that chance or the second or third opportunity. Or whatever happened he was always that it was he always said it was for the kids yeah well and then, and then he would go like you know after the he's the last he continued like we'd be talking about how they were doing like years later and he had such a memory of yeah. everyone, yeah. everyone yeah. like he would say hey mr friend remember that you know this kid from five years ago and you know it, and, and good and bad like that would happen in their lives and he would you know he would say oh yeah this happened or uh, he would say, oh, this, unfortunately, this happened. And, but he was always, like, very like, in in the now of of all the previous kids. Um, it's just, you know, I was like, wow. I mean, he just, you know, he, he's like, oh, yeah, this happened. You know, he, he went to he, he's in college or he's at, you know, uh, or she's like, it was just like, yeah, he always was, yeah. I'm not, he's not the best on names, but he would remember, like, you know, uh, you know, everyone. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the pointer, like, uh, <laughs> I remember you. Young lady, young lady. Young lady. Or what was it? No matter what time of year it was, every day was Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> so when I think about Chuck, I think about someone who is articulate and caring and kind, compassionate. I mean, there are so many things that uh, I just remember sitting in meetings and whenever he spoke, he just, he had a way of commanding attention from everybody else in the room. And even though in stature, he wasn't a tall guy, his presence was felt and his compassion and his love was felt. Uh, I just enjoyed being in meetings with him. He always greeted me with a smile. He was an amazing, amazing man. And uh, to think about him not being here is, um, is sad. And so we will definitely miss him. I always looked forward to see what you were going to be wearing because you had the best suits and the best ties and the best shirts. That, sorry, James, of anyone that I knew. And um, it was always it was always exciting to see what he had on and what he was wearing because he always was so well dressed. So I don't know how much all of you know about how much time I would spend at Waller, but over the years I got to spend a lot of time with Chuck and. Uh, Funny that I just said Chuck, I, I've always called him Mr. Bad, so I don't know why I said Chuck, but he just has that, uh, that presence about him that, you know, made me want to call him Mr. Bad, and I had this respect for him similar to uh, respect that I have for my father or grandfather or um, just somebody I look up to. So it was just, um, you know, just always had such um, great conversations and just a great time being with him at, at Waller where, you know, his pride 
for that community and his children and teachers and parents. It just shines so bright every time that I was there. You know, he just he kind of struts down the hall and kind of he walks really fast. He's very hard, very hard for me to keep up with him. He just moves, he moves fast and, you know, constantly talking to people like the whole time down the hall. Young lady, young man, you, you know, like uh, just just constantly talking to people and having them come over and and um, you know always making sure making a point of introducing me to people and making sure that I knew what was going on with with each each student, which he was so well aware of. He just he knew he just knew the the community really well. He knew his students really well and 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 just loved loved them so so much. Um, so it was just, it was always just such a pleasure to, to spend time with him. And as I said, I, I, I got to spend a lot of time with him. And, you know, it's, even aside from work, we would have a lot of nice conversations just about life. Um, and, you know, it's just, it was like, uh, it was a strange mentorship, supervision type of uh, relationship yeah. where we kind of played both roles to each other. Um, so very sad. And, you know, I'm fortunate that I got a chance to have a really nice, long conversation with him a few weeks ago um, and, to, and just catch up and um, you know, just have like a nice one-on-one. -on -one. We got to go deep on a few things. Um, so glad I got that time with him recently. When I started in BPS, I was a little bit overwhelmed and a little intimidated. And I remember walking into the board of Pitt Waller and Mr. Babb was right there at the front door greeting every single student by name. And we had barely met and he greeted me by name and he had me stand right beside him as he greeted the kids the rest of the day. And I was um, just so impressed with that immediately. And then um, as I started getting to know the building more and just wandering in and out of the offices on my own, uh, he would always pull me into his office before I left. And no matter what day or how busy the world was on that day, there were always kids in his room. And he would say, Miss Moscato, you've got to sit here and listen to so-and-so, show you what they know and, and just bragged about it. And, and I couldn't leave the office until I heard every single little detail about the student's progress in the work and, and how far that student had come. And no matter what was going on, there was no doubt that he believed in the potential of every single student and every single teacher. And um, it was a point of pride for him, I think, as well as um, just pride in the student. So I think that is my biggest memory is how much he loved the kids and how much he loved the staff and he just loved the work of being an educator. So I um, got to know Mr. Babb before I, I returned to DPS. He was actually one of my professors during um, my first master's degree. And it was just at the infancy of, of Pitt Waller. And most of our class started, if we spend the first about 20 minutes of class with him just talking about this new school that he was leading and his pride and the worth um, of all of the children in the community. So if we end scene there, my, my course ends. Um, a few years later, I had returned to DPS um, and, and join a new network, and, and there he is. And it was like, hey, I, I know you. And it just it jumped right back there, the same conversation that started our, our class for him to talk about the kids. And I think um, in any of our conversations, whether we are at a place of being stuck, whether this is in class or as a colleague alongside, um, Bab, he always he always brought it back to kids and what they deserved. Um, not what we as adults needed at the moment, but I could hear him just kind of leaning back and saying, you know, okay, guys, we, we can do this. You know, the kids need us. The kids deserve this. And so I, I can appreciate that because the, 
the longer I am out in the far Northeast, there are days that are, are really hard and, and being able to anchor myself and the kids need us and what do they, do they deserve is exactly what I need to hear. And, and I agree with you, Trish, he had the best outfits. <laughs> <laughs> and so being able to, to hear and see such a proud man uh, advocate for kids who who are, are worthy and, and who look like him is was definitely a gift in my life. I agree with you, Yolanda. I was thinking about my favorite story about Mr. Babb. Well, I have a lot, but um, he came over to Greenwood to um, help us out last year. And I will tell you that within a week, he knew the names of most all, all the staff members. And um, he even had nicknames for some, like for our PE teacher, he would call him coach. And, and he would say, hey coach, uh, we gotta get together and have coffee or, or do something. But he always built relationships with people. So I think relationships is one of the key things that I'll take away from just having the privilege of getting to know him. Um, and. The funny story I have is there is one of the cutest kids at Greenwood that he had a lot of energy as a first grader, lots and lots of energy, but uh, Mr. Bad found a way to kind of get him to uh, do what he was supposed to do when he was supposed to do it. And what he told this little boy was that he was in the military and that in the military you have to behave a certain way and people are depending on you. And so he uh, asked him if he'd ever like to be in the military. And he said, yeah, I, I, I'm interested. He said, what, what if I help train you? And um, what if um, I have sort of a little enlistment here at the school? And he was so excited. So he brought this little boy a little flag patch and got it put on his shirt and um, had a little ceremony in my office. And I tell you, it was the best thing because every time um, this little boy would uh, be acting a little silly or goofy, he would say, soldier, soldier, I need you to straighten up, soldier. And he would stand so tall and walk with his class. He just, he had a way of making, um, seeing the best out of every kid and adult. You know, he saw the best in people. And so I think that's what I'll most remember about him is um, remembering to see the best in people. And I'll take that away with me for life because he always did. I like to have the story about him. It was, it was really, really a great story. And that was, it's in my heart and I'll never forget it. We, we had a meeting, we had a network meeting out there and um, we had the opportunity to stay and work thank you james and um and so i did and i think i was there with my ap and um all the food was left over all the wonderful food that we had always order all the extras and um he was coming in out of the library there and at one time he got caged and he ran out of the library and then maybe about six seven minutes later he was a little boy must have been oh five or six years old came running pretty challenging, came running to the library, and Mr. Babs was under the table with the boy, um, talking to him, trying to barter with him, and um, reason with him, and it was just incredible to watch. And he was successful, he got, he, he, they came to uh, some sort of consensus, he, uh, they left, and then like minutes later, he came by, and I don't know if he felt some sort of need, but he, um, came up to me and explained to me what was going on with him. But the, the most profound thing to me was what he really focused on was like the little kid's strength. I think he said, you know, I know that looked really, really frightening. I know it looked really frightening and challenging, but let me tell you about him. And he went on to sit, tell about all the good points of him, how he was very vocal and, um, you know, how he really was a communicator and, um, and it stuck with me so much. She still kind of used it as a little to not only get down to the kids' level, but just his, his compassion, his heartfelt emotion towards this little guy was just incredible. And that's that's the one thing that we you know, really remember about him and the good that he's given people. He had the toughest times. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Yolanda. I think that's a great story. Um, 
I'll, I'll add on to that. I mean, he was just always so optimistic, even in the middle of the, you know, most difficult and challenging situations. He would, he, you know, he would say things like, "Okay, don't worry, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. It's all right." Um, and he just, he just had that way about him that, regardless of the situation, he would see um, things happen. And also, you know, he, he, he led a lot through giving people the benefit of the doubt, both students, parents, teachers, um, you know, and, and, the, and not, uh, not judging um, based off of, you know, what's right in front of them, but, but always thinking, okay, you know, maybe there's something going on with them that caused them to do this, or let's dig a little deeper and find out what's really going on. Um, so, you know, he gave a lot of uh, chances, and um, but I think it was all due to, um, you know, just, just think, thinking about the good in people and um, not so much thinking about the situation, but thinking more about the people. Um, and just to piggyback on Rachel's story about how he came in and supported at Greenwood and just instantly built relationships and became, you know, just one, one of the staff. He did the same thing at Howell when, when we were working together, when we needed some support. He stepped in um, and, you know, same thing. The whole staff instantly just kind of fell in love with him. He, uh, you know, within the first week had students in his office all the time coming to see him at lunch and he's just walking the halls and knew everybody by name. Um, so he just, he had a, a, this great strength in relationship building. And again, seeing, seeing the good in people. And he, you know, he's always just, he's just a happy guy. Like you, when you think about it, like, I don't know if anyone's ever seen him not happy, not smiling, 